I spent almost a dozen years with the Marlins. Uh, went there with Dave Dombrowski from the outset in the fall of 91 and had the good fortune to win a World Series with the Marlins. And then I spent a very short period of time with the Reds. And that was during the year of the, the Pete Rose uh, investigation and subsequent suspension. And that was a real challenging uh, year for me in baseball, but learned an awful lot in the short time that I was with the Reds. So, yeah, it's been four major league organizations. Did anything cross your desk any time about the Yankees? No, the, the only thing that happened um, very, very early on, after, after my first year as the general manager in Jamestown, let me back up. When I went to the 79 winter meetings, I, I met, I introduced myself to a guy who was the general manager of one of the Yankees A clubs in North Carolina. And it was a very quick, hi, how are you? I'm Dan Lanetta. I just wanted to introduce myself to you. I heard you speak uh, on the operation of your club. I was very impressed, blah, blah, blah. And that was it. And then after my first year as a general manager, I got a call out of the blue from this guy who wanted to know if I was interested in going to work for him in North Carolina. It was a Yankees affiliate, but it would have been, I would have been employed by that club. And I wanted to stay where I was at the time because I felt there was too much upside doing what I was doing. But no, never had a, a, an opportunity to go to work for the Yankees. And I suppose that would have been pretty, pretty cool considering how much I, I, I love the Yankees growing up. Um, but it never happened. So, Dan, March 24th, 2019, Chris McCoskey, Detroit News, has a, an article which most of you saw. Tigers exec Dan Lanetta recalls tumult, sadness of Pete Rose's final season. You reflect on August 24th, 1989, uh, when he's, you remember the date and it says just about every detail of it. For this group, they may not have read the article. Can you kind of give a little backdrop? You're with the Cincinnati Reds right now. You're uh, uh, director of team travel. Okay. So go through that. It's a great story. It's public now because obviously Chris got it. In spring training of 89, we had been notified that Pete was being investigated for betting on baseball. And when the investigation was announced, um, I remember Murray Cook, who was the general manager, had brought us into a room and talked to us about what we could do, what we couldn't do, what we could say, what we couldn't say. Um, obviously, it was a very, very delicate subject and what we had gone through during the course of that season was something I had never experienced before in baseball because there was so much media attention. I can't imagine what would happen in today's climate if something like this were to happen, uh, but we had news media, not just sports media, but news media following us every day of the season. Um, it was uh, not fun and there were numerous occasions where we'd be on the road and I would have to get in contact with the hotel general manager to find a way to get Pete out of the hotel through a back door because it was next to impossible to get through the lobby of a hotel. Um, I can remember one instance, uh, Pete and uh, Marty Brenneman, the, the uh, voice of the Reds, we were sitting in Pete's office prior to a game in St. Louis and just talking baseball as we typically would. This was in July and three three members from, uh, three news members from ABC just come walking into his office. Now they couldn't do that today because there are so many hurdles you have to jump to, to get to uh, the manager. But they walked into Pete's office and uh, looked at us and said, uh, uh, we're here, we're going to be covering you like this for the rest of the season. P 
Pete and Marty and I looked at each other and we're like, what are you, what are you talking about? We're going to follow you and we're going to be on your tail every day for the rest of the season. And it was, it was so incredibly unbelievable that anybody could sort of have the audacity to to approach uh, the matter in the way that they did. Uh, but that was sort of typical of what we had to deal with. But on that particular day, August 24th, we were playing the Cubs in Chicago, and there still there weren't any lights at Wrigley Field, and uh, we had a day game. I don't even remember what happened in the game that day, but left the ballpark after the game, and uh, I had gone out to meet some friends for dinner, and of course back then, no cell phones. So came back from dinner, and I would always stop at the front desk to pick up my messages, and I stopped at the front desk, and I had three or four messages, and one of the messages was from Pete, and he said, call me as soon as you get this message. So I went back to my room, and I called Pete's room, and said, hey, what's, what's happening? He said, I need, you to get me a, uh, I need you to get me home to Cincinnati tomorrow. And I said, okay, when, do, when am I going to get you back? And he said, I'm not coming back. And he didn't need to say any, any more.